Hi, before we get started today, I just wanted to let you know that we had a little bit of an issue with our audio when we were recording this podcast. So you might notice some crackles and pops. We apologize for that. Um, We didn't want to re-record because we didn't want to lose the impromptu banter. This is a amateur podcast. We're just figuring things out. So thank you for your understanding. We're gabbing with Greenwood. Greenwood Gab. Hey everyone, this is Sarah and I'm here with Natalie. And if you didn't notice, you might want to rewind and listen to the theme song again because guess what? There's real instruments now. It's no longer a terrible MIDI file that I created. And this episode is all about how we created that theme song and a little bit about the musical background of some Greenwood Library staff. Yeah, Sarah gets to sit in the interviewee chair and I get to be the interviewer of her and Brent and Carlton who play the instruments in the theme song. Since Sarah also is part of the theme song, that is her voice. I'm gabbing with Greenwood. And she composed it. So we're going to talk about that in our interview coming up. We hope you enjoy. Okay, so today we're here with a behind the scenes look at the creation and recording of our Greenwood Gab theme song. I have the three masterminds behind this theme song with me here today. I'm joined, as always, by Sarah Reynolds, yo, composer and vocalist on the theme song. On the clarinet, we have Dean Brent Roberts. Whoop, whoop. And on the tuba, we have someone who has not yet been on the podcast, Carlton Hobbs. Hello. So we'll actually start with Carlton, since you haven't been on the podcast and our listeners haven't got a chance to hear you yet. Why don't you tell us your job title, how long you've been at Longwood, and if you care to share a fun fact about yourself. Okay. My name is Carlton Hobbs. I am the information service manager here at the library. If you don't count my student days, I've been here since 2015. I do remember when he was a student here. That was 2014. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm old. (laughs) So I'm old too (laughs) at this point. But yeah, I've been with the library since 2015. Various different positions. A fun fact about me, I guess since it's a musical episode, I'll talk about all the different musical instruments that I played to various degrees of proficiency. <laughs> there was the flute, of course the tuba, there's some string bass in there, a trombone, I guess technically violin, since baritone is very similar, baritone. But yeah, that's about it. That's it? I mean, <laughs> that, was, that was kind of a lot. Brent, since you're also a guest on the podcast, do you want to share another fun fact about yourself? Why, yes, Natalie, I would. <laughs> I guess uh, since this is the, it is the musical episode, I play clarinet, uh, but now, and I also play saxophone. I have an alto saxophone. It turns out I had a mystery alto saxophone fly, floating around in my house, so they're multiplying. In high school jazz band, I also played baritone saxophone. Ooh. Right. Yeah, because they didn't have clarinet. Now I feel, I feel dwarfed by all of Carlton's instruments that he can play. Maybe we should ask, uh, what is your fantasy instrument? You want to ask me that one? Sure. Brent, what is your fantasy instrument that you wish you could play? Thank you, Natalie. I'm glad you asked. I, I've always wished I could play the banjo. So it could be like Kermit the Frog just sitting out in the swamp <laughs> dreaming about the rainbow connection. Do you have a fantasy instrument, Carlton? I forgot to add that I dabbled in the berry sax for like a week. So fantasy instrument would be the berry sax just because it's just so smooth, so good. No Muppet relations. <laughs> no Muppet relations. <laughs> I dabbled in the trumpet at one time when I was a music major in college. I always you know, felt like I would be cooler if I could play the trumpet because the people who play the trumpet are always kind of you know on the edge. They're out there. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Even among even among the brass, even even down, you know, on the back brass line. I feel like if you play trumpet, you're on that upper epilogue of like, I'm cooler than all of you. Yeah. Even though low brass is the best, I have a background. I played the baritone horn, bass club baritone horn, as well as the trombone in middle school, but my arms were not long enough to play. I have like Tyrannosaurus <laughs> Rex arms. <laughs> So I'm primarily a vocalist, but my fantasy instrument would be the cello. I've always thought the cello would be a cool one to learn. I feel left out. I have 
no musical background. I mean, I was in a children's choir when I was young when, you know, I wanted to be a Spice Girl and thought I could grow up and be a singer. Go power! I will say I, I have no musical instrument experience, but when I was like middle school age, I had a perm and my best friend started calling me Kenny G because <laughs> my hair looked like his. <laughs> Fun fact, Kenny G's brother was my college choir director. Oh. The G stands for Gorlick. Oh. oh. Interesting. I did not know that. See, it all comes together. It all comes together. See, but even with no musical background, I, I fit in here <laughs> and I feel important. Although I would like to see a, some evidence of that perm. I'd like to see a photo. I, I have pictures. <laughs> And, my and, seventh grade graduation, so my elementary school ended at seventh grade and then high school started eighth grade. So my seventh grade graduation, I have the perm and the have my, perm. my Kenny G hair. Nice. And you were going to be a Spice Girl. What, what was going to be your Spice identifier? <laughs> well, my favorite Spice Girl was Posh Spice. Victoria, now Beckham. She's still amazing. Although she wasn't, I mean, don't come at me, but she wasn't a great vocalist. But <laughs> I liked her her whole persona. She had the attitude. Yeah, she had the attitude. It was a thing. It was a vibe. I also forgot to mention that I can also play the piano. Oh my gosh. But don't ask our friends at the music department how about my playing skills when I was a student there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Carlton, how about we just start with what instruments can't you play or haven't you ever tried to play? I've Did never... you play the recorder in elementary school? No, never played the recorder. Oh, wow. See, I did. So <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Fun story about that. In my school, once you hit fifth grade, you could either do your core electives like art, music, all that fun stuff. But they were like, but if you want to do band, you always do band and you don't get art and all that other stuff. So I chose band. And because I was in band, I got to play instruments while all the other kids who didn't do band went to music and played the recorder. So I have never touched a recorder before. Oh, wow. wow. Okay, so we've kind of talked about your backgrounds with instruments and you know how you kind of got started with those but how did you kind of get here today like what is your background in helping you decide to still play music as an adult and we can start with Sarah since she hasn't got a ton of time to talk yet I have been interjecting because that's what I love to do but I think my mother once said that I came out of the womb singing <laughs> so I might have to cut that out it might gross people out but <laughs> Well, I've, babies cry. <laughs> it's like singing. If you had a nice I'm pitch. <laughs> yeah. My father is a musician, so I grew up in a house full of instruments. And even, you know, it was just something that was important to my family to sing together, to play instruments and that sort of thing. And so singing has always been a part of my life. I've continued singing as an adult through choirs at church, as well as I now sing with a community choir here in Farmville called the Commonwealth Chorale. And we're always looking for new singers, especially tenors. So if you're interested, you can check us out on Facebook. We are Commonwealth Chorale VA on Facebook. So you can find us there to learn more about when we rehearse, which Tuesday nights at the Farmville Presbyterian Church starting this fall. Brent, and I know you are also involved in a community organization, so can you talk about that as well? I am. Thank you, Natalie. I play second clarinet, of course, which is kind of the linchpin instrument in the entire band, uh, is second clarinet. And uh, I play in the Heart of Virginia Community Band, and we practice on Monday nights from 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. in Weigel Hall. That's the music hall here on the beautiful Longwood campus in Farmville, Virginia, in room 104. And Carlton also plays in the Heart of Virginia Community Band. I'm the only low brass player. <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> Depends on who's there. <laughs> but yes, I also played there. Did you talk about your musical background? Yeah, talk about your musical background. Well, uh, well, well yes. In addition to I what started, said. <laughs> I started playing clarinet in fifth grade, and my music teacher was Mrs. Moore. <laughs> and when I went, that was in Lakeview Elementary School, Moses Lake, Washington. And when I went to Chief Moses Junior High School, Mr. Leroy Anderson was our band teacher. Anyway, I was very inspired. I, w I was a drum major when I was in eighth grade. And then uh, in 1988, Moses Lake High School went to Marching Bands of America Summer Nationals competition. Ooh. Yes, that's right. And we dominated dominated <laughs> mainly because of clarinets i would say <laughs> and it's pretty obvious yeah but uh, then i went on i was going to major in music in college that's when i picked up the trumpet a little bit and then i found out that even though i was 
pretty good for Moses Lake Washington. When I got to college, there were hundreds of other people who were a thousand times better than I was. And so I kind of, I kind of did not major in music in the end. But why did you stick with the clarinet all these years later? That's a great question, Sarah. I'm trying to think when I picked it up again. I think, it, you know, I, I've only very played it kind of off and on with my kids because my kids are, are both, they were both in band. My son plays trumpet, my daughter played clarinet, and they both played piano. And so every once in a while, I would break out the clarinet when they were growing up and we would play things together, just like at home and sometimes at church things. But I really picked it up again after I got to Farmville and had this great opportunity with the Heart of Virginia Community Band, which again, we are always recruiting. We play on Monday evenings, 7 p.m. to 9, 7.30 to 9 in Weigel Hall. Were you looking for a band to join or you just happened to come across the Heart of Virginia Community Band since like you're not from here? Carlton obviously was a Longwood alum, so he would know about it, but how did you find out about the Heart of Virginia? I just heard that they were looking for clarinets at the time, which is funny because at the time they had like six clarinets. <laughs> <laughs> now we really do need clarinets because we're down to three clarinets, but we're I think we're kind of growing again post-COVID. And Carlton, would you like to share why you're still playing music? While I was thinking about this, I also forgot that I can also play the marimba. <laughs> <laughs> Just every time we have a pause or an intersection, just say, oh, I also forgot. I can play. I can play those instruments. <laughs> I come from no musical background. No one in my family was, like, really musical inclined. Mostly I just got into it because of my older brother and because the high school band would come to the primary school and put on a concert. I just thought it was cool. So fifth grade, I joined, and my first instrument was the flute. And for a year, I just played the flute until the end of that year, my band director, which I don't remember her name, was like, hey, we need more low brass players. Who wants to play the tuba? And I raised my hand. <laughs> and from sixth grade on, I played the tuba. My mom made fun of me. She was like, you went from the smallest instrument ever to the biggest one. <laughs> I never got the opportunity to do drum aging because all high school, I was the only low brass brass player so you were too valuable i was too valuable of an asset to let go <laughs> yeah i'm still upset that for high school when they did superlatives of like who's the best like music person in the school and everyone voted for a drum major who was a clarinet player who <laughs> <laughs> So I know I mentioned that I was drum major in eighth grade for our middle school band, but then I was also, as a junior and senior, I was drum major for the high school marching band. So I was very proud of that. So what I think I'm hearing is that if you're a clarinet player who's okay, you would make an excellent drum major. <laughs> The look on Brent's face. That is right probably now. accurate. That is probably <laughs> accurate. There's so many clarinets. We can sacrifice one <laughs> to be drum major. But um, I didn't really have a desire to pursue music after high school. Originally, I was just like, I want to be a doctor or a veterinarian, one of those things. And then junior of high school, all of a sudden, I was just like, I'm going to major in music. And to tell that to your parents, being like, I know I was going to do this, but I'm going to do this instead. <laughs> and they're just like, okay, do whatever you want to do. You got to so, follow your dreams. Um, while I was in high school, I was able to come to Longwood for honor bands. That's where I got to meet the legendary Gordon Ring. Woo! And by his recommendation and help, I got into Longwood after one terrible experience. But that's a different story. No. <laughs> but terrible experience at Longwood? Not at Longwood. At a okay. different place. I will not name. But um, major in music. Here at Longwood, you basically go through either program for teaching or performance. I did neither because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was just happy to be playing my instruments. And then long story short, here I am now. <laughs> Yay. Yay, libraries. <laughs> libraries are just as fun as being a music performer or instructor. If they had mentioned to me that you could pursue a degree in music librarianship, I would have gone for that. Like, okay, yes, that's what I want to do. But no one mentioned that to me until when I started working here as a student. I was like, oh, music librarianship. That's cool. It's a big deal. A lot of a lot of college libraries have a separate music library and they, they need somebody with a background in music. My question for you, Carlton, is have you ever played a Yamaha Vanova casual wind instrument? Have you ever seen that? Seen one of these guys? It's like a little PVC like a piece of PVC pipe and it has a I had seen one of those soprano, before soprano saxophone mouthpiece and reed on it have you ever played one I have not but I think we someone, found the instrument Carlton cannot play that's one I have not played I think someone at a music building had something similar to it 
How about a kalimba thumb piano <laughs> with 17 keys? I have played a thumb piano. Have? I have. Okay, Sarah's got, got the thumb piano covered. No, but I did remember that I inherited an accordion from one of Katie's relatives. So I have an accordion at home that I need to learn how to play. Oh, wow. <laughs> Once you learn, we'll rewrite the Greenwood Gap theme song to include an co- accordion, because I think that would make it just amazing. I'll start rehearsing now. Well, that's a good segue, because my next question is for Sarah. So when we decided we wanted to do a podcast, I think we decided on the name first, and then really quickly after, Sarah just started humming a theme song. So what was your inspiration behind composing the theme song for Greenwood Gab? Or did you have one? I guess in my brain, I went to like old, like 80s NPR kinds of themes that you would hear. And there was something about the name Greenwood Gab that sounded a little, I don't know, Lawrence Welke. So I just kind of went to this a little bit jazzy, a little bit silly, short and sweet. I don't know if there was real direct inspiration but and did you have tuba and clarinet in mind so i did i was thinking i know that there are two people that work in the library who play these instruments so if i were to write a song that used those two instruments what would i do with them and of course no one thinks about tuba without thinking of an oompa line (laughs) and a clarinet is always a great instrument to do a little noodling on. Mm, so I kind of combined. Uh, the, the, noodle, the noodle instrument, <laughs> yes. So proud. And then with a little jazzy uh, voice over that. And then the Greenwood Gap whisper at the end, which I just thought added, I don't know, a little NPR-esque-ness to it. So. Would you say that the podcast wouldn't be the podcast without that musical introduction? I don't know. Maybe that's a question for Natalie as the non-musical one. I love our theme song. I, I think it fits with the vibe we're going for. And it's inclusive of more library staff than just Sarah and I. So we want the whole library to feel a part of this, even though we're the hosts. So... We thank you both for participating in our shenanigans. Thank (laughs) you, Carlton, for bringing your giant tuba into the library to record our theme song today. If it's your invest in that pocket tuba, which exists, I really want one. Did any of the three of you have anything else you'd like to add? about music, about libraries, about anything. We are always recruiting for the Heart of Virginia Community Band. We play on Mondays from 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. in Weigel Hall, room 104. We'll see you there. And no competition because on Tuesday nights, you can pop into the Commonwealth Chorale's rehearsals, which are at 7 at the Farmville Presbyterian Church. We'll be starting back up this fall, and you can find more information out on our Facebook page, Commonwealth Chorale VA. I've been sitting here trying to think of other instruments I can play. Did you come up with any? Have you ever played the steel drums? No, never played the steel drums. I can do timpani, kind of. You just have to tell me which notes each one of them is set to. Drums. <laughs> just like your standard drum kit, snares. See, the thing is, I can tap out rhythms like no problem, but at a drum set, I fumble a lot. I don't know why the two just don't coordinate well with me. I think we're going to name this uh, episode, uh, What Instrument Can't You Play, Carlton? <laughs> I wanted to play the French horn, but my instructor at the time said that she would disown me for like destroying my chops playing on the very tiny French horn mouthpiece. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you think of any after this recording, this podcast will be posted on YouTube where you can leave comments. So we're looking forward to your comment of other instruments you think of that you remember that you've played once. (laughs) Thus, E-flat tuba count. It has the word tuba in it, so sure. (laughs) I know. Speaking of which, so I wrote the uh, music for the theme song using the kind of standard clarinet tuning. Have you ever played the, there's another one, isn't there? Like the A-flat? There's an E-flat clarinet and a bass clarinet. I have not played those. I have not even played. This has been the great thing about this podcast today. (laughs) It's revealed to me how little, how little I have uh, actually done in the music field. That is our goal, to make the dean feel small. <laughs> I mean, if you had stuck it out as a music major, you probably been a, would have been exposed to a lot more instruments. Yeah, but that you had to go and become a librarian. Mm-hmm, so. mm-hmm. After changing my major 11 times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you all of you for joining us on the podcast today, and thank you for being part of our theme song that will be heading up all of our episodes, so we're excited for that. Yeah, thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.
Thank you for listening to the ruckus interview that we just had about our theme song. Um, words. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to think of what to say next. This is unscripted if you can't tell. <laughs> Yeah, and we just had a whole conversation, so now my brain is kind of shutting off. But it was really fun to hear all of the different instruments that both Brent and Carlton can play. Can you play an instrument that Carlton can, or maybe one that he can't? Let's start a competition. How many instruments can you play, and how many instruments can Carlton play, and who will win? If you're in the music department, maybe you can't play, because that might be cheating. But yeah, let us know on our social media. So Greenwood Library on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram, or Greenwood Lib LU on Twitter. Tag us and let us know what instruments that you can play that Carlton can't. Yeah. Post a picture of you with your favorite instrument. Maybe in the future we'll include you in a Greenwood Gab podcast. Yeah. Do you also want to have a crazy music conversation with us? <laughs> We'd love to have you. Have a great one, everyone. Have a great. Tweet. Tweet. <laughs>